A new Sonic game dropped today. Australia is cracking down on gambling. And yes, we're going to talk about E3. Hey, my name's Alec, and here's the hoot. <laughs> Welcome to the hoot, everybody, where we talk about the gaming news for the week so you don't have to scroll through Twitter to get it. No sponsors for this episode, so we got six members of Party Chat. Let's check it out. First party member is a video that we anticipated all week, which was Zelda Tears of the Kingdom gameplay. The game's only two months away, and we've barely seen anything. So to be fair, in this life cycle for Breath of the Wild, we really only knew about the plateau. But here's a breakdown of the information we do know. They did say the game is 100% ready to ship and ready to go. So let's get a preview of four new abilities. Recall lets you rewind the motion of things in the world. For example, we saw a rock fall from one of the Sky Islands. Link jumped on top of it, used rewind, and was able to reverse among the Sky Islands. So maybe that's one of the ways you travel through the air and to get to new heights. Use lets you stick items together to make new weapons. For example, they showed us that you could use a stick and a rock to make a hammer. He also put a mushroom on his shield. I fused a mushroom to my shield. This also extends to putting materials on arrows to get new effects, such as a freezing arrow, or a homing arrow. So essentially I'm wondering, can I make my master sword edible? And probably if you're quick, you can make new weapons on the fly and this might solve some of the durability issues that yes, is returning to the game that people didn't like, but maybe this is their way of addressing it and giving you more options. Ultra Hand allows you to put things together in the world and it's how you're gonna make vehicles or other objects. For example, Link puts together logs and fans to make a boat and it's how we saw in other trailers how he made a car or maybe a hot air balloon. The fourth ability Ascend is how I like to describe it as going Danny Phantom. He's a phantom. They say it has some restrictions, but essentially anything with a ceiling, you can go through it. Whether that be a building, whether that be a cave to get on top of a hill. Addressing you, sometimes you just don't have the stamina to climb, so this kind of solves that problem. A lot of people is hoping they take away this feature, this mechanic, but it seems they looked at ways that they can keep those in there to keep the gameplay, while also providing solutions and more creative ideas. And of course, we got new hardware with the Switch OLED, which somehow beat em ups got one, but he bleeped out and decided not to tell us how he got one. So you can go watch the video and make your own determinations, but it's it's still really cool. And we're gonna get a pro controller and a carrying case. If you keep your eye out, pre-orders for those go out everywhere all the time. Second member today is the multiverses beta is going out of beta. Yes, it's been a beta this whole time. Do preseason and the betas have seasons? I guess so. On June 25th, the game goes offline for everyone, even those that paid for the $100 founders pack. So essentially it's a $100 pre-order and they wanna relaunch it in 2024, stating they're gonna make improvements, add characters, add modes. So maybe we're finally gonna get Walter White. Are they doing this to drive away negative attention? Do they hope to have some kind of resurgence like Fall Guys did for this official release. I guess we'll look out for the official release date later. Our third story is talking about PC ports, specifically the Last of Us PC port, which is not going well. A lot of graphical issues to not even being able to play, to crashes, and it seems to be one of the recent string of just bad PC ports. Look at Callisto Protocol or Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. What makes the Last of Us port interesting is that this was even delayed due to the success of the show. They wanted to provide the best experience possible and made sure they wanted to make something optimized and good. But the question is, was was that actually an excuse because they were having issues and knew that it would be in an even buggier state had it released on its original date. I'm not going to completely blame developers. This could be a suits kind of thing where they're saying, no, the show is as popular as it can be. We need to get this product out. And I'm wondering if that's happening at other companies and that's slowly hurting PC performance. The fourth story is one a little more somber, but I wanted to make sure it got attention, which was the official ending of Beyond the Summit. Beyond the Summit was an organization known for their fun skits, their insights into some esports and hosting these fun tournaments, especially in the Dota and the Smash community. Some of it coming off the heels of Nintendo not really sponsoring or helping and kind of having resentment towards things like Beyond the Summit. It's sad because a lot of fun and a lot of good people are going to lose jobs and it's an organization that really felt like it was owned and it was ran by people that cared. It wasn't just money, but it was actually the fun of the tournaments and the games. If you get a moment, look up some of the Beyond the Summit videos. I recommend Slime on the Street. They were fun and it's something that I don't know if we'll ever get like it again. The fifth story comes from Down Under, and it looks like Australia has a proposal to try to stop loot boxes in games, or at least make them a little harder to get into. The proposal would make any type of simulated gambling in a game make the game have a restricted 18 plus rating. The normal M rating is just advisory, but this extra restriction would make it where they can't buy it without the supervision of a parent. It's not going to stop children, but it is another step and another thing to be wary of. The question is, are devs going to try to get around this, such as maybe you offer DLC that would have that content so you can keep your lower rating and then just add it later do you have content that has randomized loot and that sounds kind of scummy but i wouldn't call it impossible i eat something to look after and we'll say what that story goes like for now i'm gonna go check out my order at mac uh, I'm, I'm really sorry on our last story let's talk about layoffs especially at ea it's being reported ea is laying off about six percent of their company equaling about 800 plus jobs citing that they want to focus on projects not really part of their strategy which is interesting because they just opened that new location in madison to focus on apex but some of these people 
people are related to the canceled Apex Legends Mobile and that old Titanfall project that got canceled. Last week we talked about Twitch layoffs and I don't think the stories about people getting let go at gaming companies are going to stop. During the pandemic, a lot of companies ended up over hiring due to the boom of games and they saw a future where it was going to thrive. And now that people are coming into office, they realize, wait, maybe we don't need this office space or things can be better remote or maybe we don't need this many people because the payroll is a lot different. A Jacob Wolf report shows that Epic is actually freezing their hiring and trying to avoid laying off people. It's a better step in the right direction, but it shows maybe the game industry is having to take a halt or having to do a lot of let goes. I don't think the story stops and maybe some try to get ahead of it before it just becomes too much bad press. Maybe if you kind of throw it in the mix of everybody getting let go, they can get it under the rug. Games industry is still growing, so I wonder how much is just profits and how much is just necessary. Especially with EA, with their bigger money makers being mad at FIFA loot boxes, this could be a hard part for EA. That's all for party members, let's get to the sponsor and boss battle. No sponsors this week, I want to remind you to follow me on other socials for short form content and just to see other things going on, and back to boss battle. Welcome to boss battle everybody, where I sit in the middle of the screen, but it's where I tackle bigger stories or bigger topics that I want to give a little bit more time to. This week's boss, we're going to be talking about E3 and its cancellation. It's probably nothing you probably haven't heard before, but it's something I feel like we need to touch on. The official cancellation was reported by IGN and confirmed by two different sources that in a company email, they've confirmed that they're canceling the event due to lack of market interest and also saying that maybe some vendors some people wouldn't have time to create things for the show but i think there's other things that this shouldn't really come as a surprise to people but let's touch on them anyway i think the first thing to tackle is that it's not really a surprise that people feel like they don't need e3 anymore sony and nintendo haven't been there for multiple years as it is and microsoft was kind of the last bastion who even pulled out and realized wow we can do our own things and they continue to do their own events throughout the year during the pandemic they especially had to do their own digital events and realize oh you get a a little bit more creative freedom and you can probably save money with the big three not being there the incentive is hey maybe these smaller performers can do it which ubisoft said last week they would be at e3 and just this week so a month after that announcement pull out that was followed by sega tencent even devolver digital so even indies are feeling this isn't the event that'll be beneficial for us but you can even look at smaller events like the pc gaming show there's something about your own freedoms and maybe other partners that e3 just isn't what it used to be but you also can't say this conglomerate of events announcements isn't a thing anymore because Summer Games Fest with Jeff Keighley is still something very successful. And I wonder if the difference is to have this figurehead that has connections or even just the fact that there's a spokesperson. Because with Jeff Keighley, he's synonymous with Summer Games Fest, Opening Night Gamescom, and the Game Awards. So maybe it's the pool of him. Maybe E3 should have brought somebody in to be their main person to go to. The interesting part of the in-person event is that who was it really for? I think a lot of fans always dreamed of going, but it was also a big thing for people in the media. And that's one side that a lot of them are talking about is that they don't get to see their friends and so i'm wondering if something's going to emerge as the premier place to talk to your friends in the games industry but what event does that leave to the average consumer there is a need there and at some point e3 just wasn't beneficial and now i don't know exactly what the solution could be for a place that is good for consumers good for the media and feels necessary people are going to twitter they're going to other social medias to get their news anyway they watch it all online so even the consumer feels hey i can get just as much as an experience watch than I am as going. I don't want to just dunk on E3. I think it's important how I talk about the games industry talks about that they'll miss seeing their friends. I do think the average consumer will miss what was essentially Christmas for gaming. How fun you were getting announcements every hour. You had something to look forward to the holidays. And it's the one thing that gamers out of every region, whether you just do visual novels, whether you just played League and you hated yourself, and maybe you just wanted to see what new Call of Duty stuff was happening or what new Mario and Zelda game came out. E3 was something you knew and E3 is something you could look forward to or you even talk to a friend like this to be like hey what was new at e3 what's the big thing there's still going to be plenty of news this summer in fact cd project red said hey in june we're going to be talking about phantom liberty it's still going to be the premiere news time but it's time to say goodbye to one of the biggest parts of gaming history and for me it's something that i gotta let go of a dream which was to attend an e3 maybe i'll see what the next big event is but for now here's to e3 looks like we took down the boss and now let's check out our loop available for pre-order on amazon now are red and blue xbox elite controllers if you don't like the black, it's trying for something new and maybe something a little bit more flashy for a new cool controller. Forspoken gets DLC. No, you can't say that maybe Square Enix hasn't given up. I'm pretty sure stuff like this is 
game's already in development on release and maybe if it's successful maybe they do get more i don't want to get into too many spoilers in case you do want to play but it is a prequel happening in one of the major events in the past we'll see how all that goes on may 26. horizon forbidden west dlc news the dlc was originally announced as a ps5 exclusive and not really explaining why that reason is now known and it's related to the clouds no not cloud technology to hold your gains the literal clouds in the game kind of spoilery territory so you can fast forward if you want toward the end of the game you get the ability to travel in the sky via a mount and it looks like it's going to have a big focus on the dlc here on april 19th we'll see if all this cloud technology is going to be worth it and more dlc news we go to minecraft which has a new dnd story expansion coming actually saddle up to the table pick a character in class and go fight your favorite forbidden realms enemies mine being the beholder in minecraft style no release date on that but they do say it's coming very soon resident evil 4 is making great success selling over 3 million copies in just the first two days doesn't look like it's going to stop there and we're looking at probably remake of the year and probably the one remake to get a game of the year nomination do i think remakes can win game of the year no but maybe that's a boss battle for another day microsoft seizes its one dollar for a month of game pass trial citing they want to see other ways that they can get people on the game pass and try it out but i'm not convinced this isn't just a play to get people prepared for starfield and bring in that great bethesda starfield money. and what sounds like a sonic the hedgehog april fool's joke is a legitimate sonic the hedgehog video game available on steam the murder of sonic the hedgehog visual novel available now that's all of our loot now we go an extra xp which is some projects i'm working on i don't have anything specific but i do want to explore maybe different types of content outside of news which would be stream highlights or let's play content i don't think crazy right now but be on the lookout for my frog detective highlights coming very soon level up is where i like to shout out cool things in gaming or other events or videos i think is worth a watch dark and darker was a DD medieval style tarkov which was really fun and successful but the studio is under heat with accusations of stolen assets i would love to cover it but i don't think i have the greatest insight i think charlie aka moist critical might have a better way of putting this into his own style of words and how that case is going. And that's the hoop for this week. Thanks for joining the show. If you want more content like this, I do a show every week, but I also do Monday through Friday short form content on all of my socials. And I'm trying my way to get to Twitch partner. So I do need some subs and I do need some more views. With all that being said, I do hope at some point I reminded you that, hey, games are meant to be fun. My name's Alec. Thanks for talking games with me.